car clubs as well, so I'm, a, you know, I'm really big when it comes to taking long drives myself. Um, now, I'm, I'm wondering, I, I recognize a lot of faces. Is there anybody here who was not on the tour the other day? The South Tour. The South Tour. Okay, so just uh, a few folks. So <coughs> please, if I say something, because I'm since most of the audience already was on the South Tour, um, I may sort of breeze over some things. Please raise your hand and say, please explain that. Okay, and I'd be happy to do that. Um, since we took this uh, tour the other day, um, I've been thinking about, um, I, we, we went along uh, the, the Lincoln Highway, which to me was the post road, or the old Dutch road, or the uh, road um, that was known as the King's Highway um, during British America. Um, I wondered, you know, what exactly would I tell all of you folks who have a lot of your mind in the 20th century as opposed to the 18th century, which is where my, my mind resides um, along the, the, the King's Highway or the Lincoln Highway. I was sorry that I missed the event earlier, uh, the, the talk earlier about the, um, the, the 1910 convoy. Um, I, I, would have, I think I would have enjoyed that. Um, but as a military historian, um, one of the things that is uppermost when we study troop movements and how uh, uh, engagements unfolded, obviously where the armies moved was very, very important. And I think that um, with the King's Highway, um, having been essentially the basis for what became the Lincoln Highway. Um, I think it's very interesting to be able to understand um, how New Jersey's piece of the Lincoln Highway is really so historic in our collective story of American history. Um, and um, let me just tell this person I can't talk to him right now. <laughs> um, calling him all day, now he calls me. Um, so what I wanted to do is give a little bit of a recap and take a bit of a different view of the tour that we took the other day and talk about it in relation to um, how what was such an important part of American history became the Lincoln Highway, okay? And, and um, how the development of our nation grew through the decades and through the centuries, um, and how our founding and how we became a nation kind of evaporated and became the Lincoln Highway and now, all of you who are dedicated to keeping the um, history and keeping the importance of this road um, in uppermost in your minds and teaching your fellow citizens about the importance of the development of 20th century and 21st century history, um, so there, there's a parallel here. You know, you think of the Lincoln Highway as something that, this is really cool. These markers are really cool. We need to remember what happened. We, well, I do, I'm like one step before that, okay? So I'm saying, okay, yeah, we drive down this road every day. We drive to school, we drive to the market, we drive to, you know, our kids to soccer practice. Well. <laughs> What you're thinking is, yes, and this was the Lincoln Highway. This used to be the Lincoln Highway. Well, I'm driving down the same road and saying, you know, yeah, I'm driving my kids to soccer practice, or in this case, my grandkids. But <laughs> I'm thinking, Washington walked down this road. Okay? So we're doing the same thing. We're recognizing.
recognizing the importance of history. We're just doing it in different time periods. And while I know New Jersey's King's Highway, Post Road, I would venture to say that in your states, where, where you live, you probably have similar kind of history. Now, I don't know if you can top me with Washington <laughs> and the Revolution. And we won the Revolution. I don't know if you can top that, but I'm happy to hear about it. Okay, I'm, I'm certainly interested in hearing about it. Because there, you know, one of the things that I mentioned on the bus is there were other King's Highways. You know, we, we talk about what is today the Lincoln Highway or what was in the early 20th century was the, the Lincoln Highway. Um, whereas in the 18th century, there, it, was the Link, it was the King's Highway. And there were other King's Highways as well. You know, okay, so the King's Highway went from Boston to Springfield, Massachusetts, but it also went from Boston to Hartford, Connecticut. So there were two King's Highways, and while there was only one Lincoln Highway, okay, the Lincoln Highway changed. You know, it changed as, as development changed and as roads changed, so it, it, it also evolved a little bit. So what I wanted to do is just kind of run through again, if we, if you will allow me, because A, it's the only thing I know about, and <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I do know a couple of other things. But B, um, I think it's important to sort of understand and put the Lincoln Highway into context of how important the Lincoln Highway is, um, at least in New Jersey, okay? Um, and one of the things that I've been thinking about, just in preparing to talk to you folks, since I have this passion, my wife would call it obsession, my kids would call it mania, about the American Revolution and teaching our fellow citizens about our, who we are and where we came from. And you folks, I'm just going to skip right to mania, um, have the same passion about the Lincoln Highway. Um, we're doing the same thing. And in just reading up on the Lincoln Highway and sort of learning about um, what you all have been studying, learning, talking about for obviously many years, I have now gained... Um, a newfound appreciation for what you're doing and also it is now something that I have sort of folded into my repertoire when I give tours um, from now on because uh, just as an example and we'll, we'll talk about this on June 29th the tour that I gave you folks the other day I'm giving to 80 soldiers of the 404th Civil Affairs Brigade um, of the United States Army. And I'm giving them the tour of the Princeton campaign. But as a part of that tour, um, I will be able to also fold into that tour what I have learned just in researching about the Lincoln Highway and, and how the Lincoln Highway became the artery for 20th century America, just as the King's Highway was the artery for 18th century America. Okay, does that make sense? Um, all right. So let, let's let's do let's do the tour again, if you will. We call it we call it a tour. Um, and let's see if I can. No, I I, uh, I don't have it as a uh, I have it as a PDF. So you have to tell me to advance for you. Advance for me, please. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, and I think maybe if many, some of you have this packet as well. So let's talk about, um, I showed this map off in the bus um, to talk about 20th century, uh, 21st century New Jersey um, on your left and 18th century New Jersey here on your right. Now if you scroll up, Ernie. So you see, I talked about how this 
20th century map was the province line, and this really shows you definitively what the province line is, okay? And the other thing that I talked about in terms of the topography was how you have this part of New Jersey is the coastal plain. So this is all sand, okay? Right now, to today, this is all called the Pine Barrens in here. It's, it's almost completely un, undeveloped. I mean, you think about New Jersey as, uh, I think it's the th most populous state in the, in the nation. Um, density. density, yeah. The, there's no, nothing here <laughs> at all, okay? We also, we here in New Jersey also joke about how we are the garden state. Well, when most people drive through New Jersey from New York to Philadelphia, they're driving down the New Jersey Turnpike and they're driving through some of the most densely populated sections of the state um, through oil refineries and such. You think, this is the Garden State? <laughs> you know, where did that nickname come from? Well, this was the Garden State during the Revolution. Okay, troops relied on the farmland in New Jersey to keep the armies going. <clears throat> and that's why we are the Garden State. The comment that I made the other day, if I didn't make it, uh, I should have, I'll make it again, that more actions, more engagements, more battles, skirmishes, took place during the American Revolution in New Jersey than any other colony. Well, how did people get around? Mostly they just marched through farmland. But the king's troops marched on the king's highway. Okay? It's one of the reasons why the British lost. is because they really didn't know how to get out into the farmland. And they didn't know how to win the hearts and minds of the people who lived out on the farms. They were just marching up and down the King's Highway, trying to take over, take over um, uh, property. Okay, so a few seconds ago, I mentioned the New Jersey Turnpike comes zipping through New Jersey. Okay, right through central New Jersey. Actually, it comes from here, it goes straight down like this. Okay, before the New Jersey Turnpike, you have the. I should have brought my little snazzy red pointer you had what was called the Brunswick Pike. The Brunswick Pike, has that got a pointer? Theoretically. Eh, not so much, don't worry about it. Not so much. That's okay, small enough room. Before the New Jersey Turnpike, it was called the Brunswick Pike, Route 1, okay? So the New Jersey Turnpike is a part of Interstate 95, goes from Maine to Florida. Route 1, as we all know, goes from Maine to Florida. So New Jersey Turnpike goes straight down New Jersey. Route 1 goes straight through New Jersey, right along this path here. It actually goes up there. But so, so before there was Route 1, there was what? Lincoln. The Lincoln Highway. And the Lincoln Highway <coughs> goes right down here. And it is the dividing line between Somerset and Middlesex County. See that? And it went right down to Trenton. So you're going from point A to point B, which is what every road is, of course, right? Going from point A to point A, point B. The King's Highway, or the Lincoln Highway, point A was New York, point B was Trenton. Okay, and to go from Trenton to from New York to Trenton, you follow this county property line essentially right down here. So it went Kings the the Lincoln Highway, or rather Kings Highway, then the Lincoln Highway went right down this line here. Okay, and then right through to Trenton. That's really the dividing line between the coastal plain and the foothills of the Wachung Mountains. So the Lincoln Highway, and maybe your talk this morning already covered this, but 
the Lincoln Highway was basically, as you're driving south, out your left window, you've got Coastal Plain. Out your right window, you've got the Watch on Mountains, the Watch on Foothills. Okay? And that is why the King's Highway, the Lincoln Highway, is where it is. Now, the um, when before the revolution, and we talked a little bit about the Lenny Lenape Algonquin Indian path that went from what was called Raritan Falls to the Delaware Falls. So the Raritan Falls is today's New Brunswick, New Jersey. Let's go to the next slide. Brunswick, which is right down the road here. Okay? No, that way. I think it's that way. Isn't it? <laughs> that way. Whatever. <laughs> South. South of us. Okay? So you have New Brunswick at Raritan Falls along the Raritan River. And you have Delaware Falls at Trenton. Okay? So that was the Indian path that went right along the foothills of the Wachon Mountains. Okay? Now, there is another feature here. Okay? I say right along the falls, or right along the, the foothills of the Wachon Mountains. Not exactly. Because there is another feature, topographical feature, that created the King's Highway on this Indian path, you know, over on top of this Indian path. How are you going to get across all the rivers? You got to go to the shallowest ford or the ford that is closest from one bank to another. So while it went along the foothills of the Wachung Mountains, it sort of went along those foothills and then when it got to a water, um, it got to one of the rivers or a stream, it would cross at one of these most logical fords. So that's why you have Raritan Falls, okay, or New Brunswick, what the Europeans called Brunswick, okay. So we, um, we essentially were traveling that Indian path. And through the centuries, you know, you sort of do this, I don't know if you've seen the, the television show Big Bang Theory where they kind of go zipping through world <laughs> history, universal history, you know, very, very quickly. Well, that's what goes on in our mind. It's like, you know, Indians, in, the natives walking the, the, their path. And then you got these ox carts going along that same pathway along farms. Now. Let's take a, take a little sidebar here and talk about how these colonial roads were taken care of, okay? Um, you know, nowadays, federal government takes care of the interstate, right? And the state governments do such a wonderful job taking care of our state roads, right? <clears throat> Pothole City. Well, who took care of the King's Highway? You know, before it became the Lincoln Highway, who took care of those roads? Was it the towns? Nope. Not in British America. Was it the states? Nope. Was it the royal government? Nope. In New Jersey, and this may be the same where you live. 
the way it works with our sidewalks out in front of our house, who's responsible for those sidewalks? <coughs> we are. I'm responsible for the sidewalk out in front of my house. So if a developer puts a sidewalk out in front of my house, and a tree root uproots that sidewalk and it goes all askew, I'm responsible for fixing the sidewalk. I'm responsible for making sure that nobody trips and breaks their neck over the sidewalk that's in front of my house. In British America, you were responsible for the road that went past your farm or through your farm. So not only did you have to farm your land and buy all of your goods, but if you had a road that went past your farm, you were responsible for the upkeep of that road. And what that generally meant is making sure that um, when it rained, it didn't have a, you know, that, that you could still be able to get your ox cart across the land. So we think of this road that we just all traveled the other day past all of these farms, because believe me when I tell you, almost all of what you passed through the other day was all just farmland. There were very few towns at all. It was all just farmland. And those farmers were responsible for the upkeep of that road. So, yes? It's bugging me. What is the current name of the town, Maidenhead now? Is that Lawrence? Lawrenceville. It is Lawrenceville. Yeah, exactly. So, and thanks for bringing me back to the map because that's one of the things that I want, that's where I was going to go next. So, when Washington uh, needed to get away from the British having lost all of those battles in the fall of 1776, and he needed to get his army someplace safe, we talked about, on the bus ride, we talked about how he had to get out of what was then called East Jersey, today North Jersey. He had to get out of East Jersey because most of the residents were loyalists. So what was the fastest way to get down that had the greatest ability to be able to communicate with all of the farms and where he could rest assured that the roads would be fast enough for his army and his artillery and well, it was the King's Highway. Of course, these people who were now in uh, open war against the King would not have called it the King's Highway. They would have called it the Post Road. This was the Post Road that went essentially from Brunswick to Princeton. So somebody would say, "I'm going to, you know, I'm going on the Princeton Road." If they were in Brunswick, I'm going on the Princeton Road. <coughs> And if they were in Princeton, I'm going on the Maidenhead Road. And if they were in Maidenhead, I'm going on the Trenton Road. That's what it was all called. They, they wouldn't have even really called it the Post Road. Okay. But if you were in Boston and you were going to go to Philadelphia, you would say, I'm going to take the Post Road. <laughs> As opposed to, you know, the Litchfield to the... <laughs> you know, so you, you just call it the Post Road all the way down. So Washington brought his army down through each of these towns, and Cornwallis chased him down through each of these towns, leaving a cantonment of soldiers at each of those towns. So when Washington gets his army over onto this side of the, the Delaware, he knows, because he's got spies, and he's, he knows where the British army is. So let's go to the next. So this is this map, which I have in your little packet there. It's kind of hard to see here, but this is a 1776 map that shows this. Here it says Woodbridge, right here, where we are. That says Woodbridge, so Rawway. So this is, um, this is the King's Highway. OK, here it says Brunswick Landing. That's New Brunswick. Here it says 15 miles from Brunswick Landing to Rocky Hill. And then it says Kingston. And in Kingston to Princeton. Princeton to Maidenhead. 
Maidenhead to Trenton. So there's your, there's your King's Highway. There's your Lincoln Highway in 1776. And down here, if you can scroll up a little bit, this being a British map, he's got the 42nd Regiment and the, the Grenadiers and the Jaegers are in Burlington. And then here we've got the different battalions you know, he's listed, they've listed all, here's Rawls Brigade and 50 Jaegers. Jaegers is the um, German word for light infantry, okay? Um, the, um, this, was, this was big in 18th century warfare right now, it's these light infantry units. So Jaegers were light infantry and Jaeger is the German word for hunter. So these were the these were the hunters. And just a little bit of a sidebar. My wife, who's Italian, we would always joke about chicken cacciatore because the word cacciatore means hunter. So you have these Italian hunters. Are they going out and hunting chicken? <laughs> <laughs> or did, did they not catch anything and their, their wife just made them chicken because they didn't catch anything? So we always wonder what chicken cacciatore was, okay? Until I started studying military history and I learned that the light infantry units of the Italian army were cacciatore, hunters. So chicken cacciatore is what they fed the Italian soldier. Okay, so I just, I, anytime I see the word Jaeger, I think of the Italian cacciatore. So, um, anyway, so, so here you've got, let's go to the next slide. So here you've got this occupied territory down the King's Highway. And this is the main transportation route that the British soldiers took. Now, I just, I, I like to throw this slide in here. When we drove through Princeton, I mentioned that you had, Princeton was really in two different counties in 1776. Here's the town side of Princeton in Somerset County, and the gown or college side was in Middlesex County. And, and again, I, I point that out because that refers back to what I said earlier, where the Lincoln Highway slash King's Highway was the dividing line between um, the two counties almost through the entire state. And I just thought, that's why I threw this slide in here, because I thought that that was very, very interesting. And then the, um, the, um, the province line that we saw on the very first slide is right here. Okay, so you can see here's the province line. And Washington needed to get his army on the western side of the province line. So now you can go back home and you say, I know why Washington went to Washington's Crossing. Because Emanuel Leutze wanted to paint that great painting and he had to get his men down there. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next slide. 18th century photo op? <laughs> yeah, exactly, 18th century photo op. Um, if, we, if we have time, and I don't want to take up too much of your time, I can tell you why that was one of the world's most, one of the world's best propaganda paintings, that painting, I'll tell you about that later on. Um, so this is just, this is Princeton proper, um, and um, I, um, I told you all the story of how Princeton became Princeton that essentially these new light Presbyterian ministers that were being trained up in Newark needed to find um, a place that was more hospitable. So they decided to go back down to this drinking town <laughs> of Princeton, where um, formerly real estate agents of the 18th century met to, to decide who was selling what property. And one of the reasons why I make this point again now today is because Princeton gained a 
wonderful reputation for being a really snazzy place to stop if you were driving along the Lincoln Highway. So during the early 20th century, if you hopped in your Packard and you were going to drive to Philadelphia, you stopped in Princeton for the night. So it also had a lot of taverns <laughs> all the way up until the, um, well, till now, still has a lot of taverns. So still a great restaurant town. Anyway, so I just thought I'd throw that in there. So we move now and just you talk about the Battle of Princeton, and mainly what I wanted to just say today about the Battle of Princeton is to talk a little bit about what we didn't do. Yes? Quickly. Um, yeah. What town is now called Tusculum? Tusculum actually wasn't a town. Um, if, here, let's go back up so we can see what he was referring to here. Okay, see? So, see where it says to Tusculum? Mm -hmm. Okay, Tusculum was the estate for the Reverend Don, John Riverspoon, Witherspoon. That was his home. So today, this is Witherspoon Street. Okay? And it says to Tusculum because that's where John, that's where Witherspoon lived. Witherspoon, who you might remember, was one of two signers of the Declaration of Independence that lived in Princeton. Okay, so this is one of the things that made Princeton, an, as far as the British were concerned, a real target. And during the month of December 1776, when the British occupied Princeton, they ransacked the joint because essentially they were, it's akin, it, it is, it, it's like um, how the federal forces during the Civil War felt about Charleston, South Carolina. This was where the revolution started. Now, the rev as we all know, the revolution really started in Boston, but as far as the British were concerned, during their occupation of New Jersey, Princeton was the hotbed of the most radical Whigs, today what we call patriots. So Princeton was really, really ravaged. Does that answer your question and more, obviously, but we move along here. So now, what I wanted to show you, really, is um, with the Battle of Princeton, um, this was, and you have this in your packet, and in terms of all of the military actions that took place, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time about the military action here today, I mean I can talk for hours about the military action, but if, if you're really interested in the 10 Crucial Days campaign, campaigns, plural, two of them, the Trenton campaign and the Princeton campaign. I had to not only rush through it while we were driving along the Lincoln Highway, but I also had to do it backwards, <laughs> you know, kind of like Ginger Rogers Frank dancing with Fred Astaire, I, you know, kind of tap dance backwards here. Because uh, we started, you know, the 10 crucial days took place on Jan from December 25th, 1776 to January 3rd, 1777. And I started on January 3rd and went backwards. That's, that was the route that we took. So, um, but if we can scroll, Ernie. Sure. What I want to talk a little bit about here, keep going. Sure. Is this is this little map here. Okay. So here's your Lincoln Highway that went from Princeton to Trenton. This was the King's Highway. And on the, the um, during the day on January 2nd, Cornwallis marched his troops down the King's Highway to meet Washington, who was in Trenton. What, what Washington had to do was he had to get out of town and flank the British. So he went this way. So let's go up to the next slide. Can you, 
keep going. Next one? Yep. So take a, take a look at this map, okay? So he gets a map from um, a student at the College of New Jersey. This is called the Cadwallader spy map, and this shows Princeton on uh, January 3rd, 1776. And this student showed Cornwallis, I'm sorry, showed Washington where all of the British were. You know, here, here's where their artillery were. They had set up redoubts here, defensive redoubts. This was a barracks, okay? These were the various different roads. So not exactly an Exxon map, but what the, the main thing is is that here, the King's Highway, and this back road that I just showed you on that other map, and this was the road that Washington was going to take in. So what Washington had done on January 2nd when Cornwallis marched down to Trenton is that he put pickets all down the King's Highway so that when Cornwallis marched from Princeton into Trenton on January 2nd, he was constantly being harassed and fired at. Every once in a while, a few riflemen would just take pot shots at Cornwallis's army, or they would actually set up defensive positions along the King's Highway. And the one, because we had to sorry, her, sort, of, sort of hurry along, um, when we took the bus tour, there was one spot I was very, very disappointed that I couldn't have shown you, because um, there's a great photograph, and you know what, I'm gonna send it to Ernie and maybe we can get it to you folks. There's this great photograph of this one section of what I call the King's Highway that has the Lincoln Highway marker. And it was right at that spot where in the um, late 20th century, a trolley line was built right along the Lincoln Highway. So, and it's right in Lawrence Township, Lawrence Township, which was the colonial maidenhead. So this, this trolley line went right along the Lincoln Highway um, at this one spot. It was right at that spot where there was this major engagement where Pennsylvania Colonel Edward Hand and Pennsylvania regiments and Maryland regiments and Virginia regiments stopped the entire British army of 7,000 men for an hour before the Battle of Aspen Pink Creek. So it's such a dramatic spot. And today there's this there's no Lincoln, mark, Lincoln Highway marker sign anymore. <laughs> There's nothing about the trolley. <laughs> There's this little tiny blue sign. I mean, seriously, it's like this big. That just says, you know, on this spot on January 2nd, 1777, you know, there was, there was some fighting. And it's such an amazing America, it's, it's such an amazing spot in American history. And People drive by, past this spot every day, not realizing that in 1922, if you were, you know, driving a big old Cadillac past the the Wenzel home, you know, the Wenzel Tile family that you know was huge in Trenton, and then right down the road from there was the one of the homes of the Roebling family that built the Brooklyn Bridge. All of this right along the Lincoln Highway, right there was where this major battle of the American Revolution took place. All right, let's move along here. Nick? Yeah. yeah. So this, this just shows exactly where that march went. So I actually go down a little bit. So you see, this is the Lincoln Highway, i.e. the King's Highway, okay? But this is where the the Americans went. They took the side road. They didn't, couldn't go along the main road for obvious reasons. That was all being patrolled by, by um, British dragoons that night. So let's go to the next. So
So this just shows the, that second battle of Trenton that took place on January 2nd. Um, I just wanted to have that in a packet so that you would have that with you. It's, it's just a good map to have, so we can move along. And while this was, no long, this was not a part of your tour, and not a part of the Lincoln Highway, I thought it would be important to see how, if you can go actually down a little bit, Ernie. So here's where, the, here's McConkie's Ferry. That's where we ate lunch, okay? Washington crossed, started marching down, split his army. Okay, now go up. And with the two points of the army, approached Trenton. And at this point right here is, and you have this in your packet that Ernie had printed up for you with the, the Trenton Battle Monument. Well, that Trenton Battle Monument is right here. So this is, this is the Lincoln Highway right here. So you see the Lincoln Highway came from Princeton. See, it's called the Princeton Road. And the Princeton Road came right down into Trenton. Here's where the battle monument is because the battle took place right here. So the Lincoln Highway goes right down here, okay? And actually, sorry, Lincoln Highway goes, it, it, went, it changed. I mean, it had a couple of directions, right? But because here's the Calhoun Street Bridge. So here's the Calhoun Street Bridge, but the British marched down here, marched into Trenton. Here's where the second battle took place. So, but didn't the Lincoln Highway at one point go down to right near where the Trenton Makes Bridge was? No. The, the, I, as I understand it, they, it wasn't supposed to be any tolls on the Lincoln Highway. Right. So they moved it from the Calhoun Street to the Trenton Makes Bridge. When that opened up, they realigned it so there were no tolls anymore. So, but, so it, it, it did go, um, it originally went to Calhoun Street Bridge. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that makes sense because the Princeton Road, really, in um, the Princeton Road, goes like goes down here, and um, actually kind of veers right right about here is where the Brunswick Circle is. So it actually goes like that. So that's how the Lincoln Highway would have gone like that down to the Calhoun Street Bridge, and then. But in, uh, in the 18th century, this was the, the main road into Trenton. So you're saying it was changed to the, um, the Trenton Makes Bridge. Okay, that makes sense. That's interesting. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we can actually skip two maps here, go to the end of the segment. So this is just a closer view, if you go up a little bit. This is just a closer view of Trenton, King Street, Queen Street. The battle, the fighting took place all along here, and um, if we were to go up, you know, bird's eye view, the Calhoun Street Bridge would be right about here. Um, so the that was the link. That was the second version of the Lincoln Highway. The first version of the Lincoln Highway would have been right here. 